Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys the response I got from ChatGPT in regards to creating macro asset portfolios. So I ended up copying the code from the response and creating this report in HTML, which I'll go over in a bit. Overall, I wanna say that the code that was provided from the chat was fairly accurate, but some human intervention is needed as I will point out some problems that I saw with the actual code. In response, I got four different steps that I needed to follow. The first one being to identify the macroeconomic factors, which we can pull directly into our studio from the FRED database. It went ahead and provided three, which are inflation, GDP growth, and unemployment. After we got the data, I had to go about cleaning it since GDP growth is reported quarterly, whereas inflation and unemployment are provided every month. Now, step number two was to collect our asset class data. And in the example, they use the SPY for equities, TLT for bonds, the GLD ETF for gold, and the Euro USD foreign exchange for our Forex column. In this section, I had to intervene and calculate monthly prices since the code I got was reading everything in as daily prices. Since in the next step, we have to calculate a linear regression, we have to have the same number of rows for our data in step one and step two. In summary, this will be our portfolio. And now in the next step, we need to estimate factor exposures by running a linear regression. So these are the factors I got from running the regression. And as you can see, when inflation goes up, we have a negative exposure in equities, which makes sense. When GDP growth rises, we can expect equities to rise. And for unemployment, it's basically flat. Now, typically, from what I know, is that when unemployment rises, equities should fall. But right now, it kind of makes sense that if unemployment rises, equities should see a small gain, as that would be an expectation of cutting rates. And again, that's just my opinion. Now we're going to go ahead and pass these in to optimize our portfolio and it used the optum. So it prints out every iteration along with the weights for the assets in our portfolio. After 18 iterations, it came up with the optimal weights. The majority of the exposure will be in equities and gold, 3% in bonds, and about 1% in Forex. Now for the optimization, I only ran 2022 data. So we can apply these weights year to date, and that would be out of sample. Now if we were to plot these weights since 2022, we would get this chart. The black line symbolizes our portfolio using the optimal weights, and this is in sample. The red line is the out of sample returns, and the green line is the equities, and these are monthly returns. So it looks like it's doing fairly well year to date, given the optimal weights. Now we can just highlight the out of sample returns, which would be the year to date performance. So the black line is our portfolio, while the red line is equities. And as of this month, it looks like we're slightly higher than the SPY, having a return of a little over 8%. And you could check out the returns and the drawdowns. Now let's take a look at the actual report to go over the code. So I created this RMD file, and we're gonna go ahead and require these packages. You can disregard this source since I'm just gonna be pulling in data from Yahoo Finance instead of the database. You can read over the response, but it simply just states what I just went over. For step one, we're gonna go ahead and require these macroeconomic factors from Fred. And what I wanted to point out was that most of these reports come out a month later. So the regression needs to be slightly modified. And you can check out the schedules of the release dates using these links. But that's something that requires a little bit of human intervention in order for us to get more accurate results. So we combine the data after we read that in, we change the column names. And since GDP is quarterly, I use NA approximate to fill any NAs and then use NALOCF since we don't have any data for 2023 yet. And I just did a little subset to create the tables here. Similarly, in step two, we're gonna read in our assets for our portfolio. We're gonna convert the prices into monthly, do a bit of formatting, and again, just subsetting 2022 for the output tables. Now in step three, we estimate the factor exposures, and this is where you would subset the date range that you want the regression to start and end, but I just wanted 2022. This is the actual regression. We extract the coefficients and then display them as a table. Now in step four, we use those factors to optimize the portfolio. We're gonna use portfolio portfolio analytics. We're going to create our portfolio, add the constraints, and I had to do a bit of formatting because the code I got was a little outdated and the packages have been upgraded since. Another way to get the full investment is to add the constraint for the weight sum to be between 97 and 101 so that we get a total weight sum of close to one for 100%. And this is where we pass in our factor exposures. And finally, after we set that in, 
we just optimize the portfolio using the optum we extract the weights and then we just plot the in sample and add a sample returns so overall i want to say that it was fairly accurate but i did have to intervene and change a few things around well that concludes the video guys i'll leave a link down in the description area to my patreon where you can find this code please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video